Look at this. It's America. Speak English. Speak English. So that's okay. Speak English. You're in America. If you don't know it, learn it. Talking that stupid Spanish around here when everybody Spanish. else is English speaking nice. American. Historically, many people that have immigrated to the United States from another country have been yelled at mockingly, speak English, you're in America now. The idea being that you're in our country and that you should adhere to our language and way of life. Now, although this is the wrong way to go about it, I understand the bigger picture. If you willingly immigrate to a place where you're going to settle, then it makes sense for you to learn the language and way of life of the new country. It doesn't mean that you have to give up your language or roots. It just means you're going to adapt to your new environment in a way that's going to be beneficial for you and the society at large. Now, let's look at it in reverse. Imagine being in your country where there's already an established language, culture, and way of life with deep historical roots, and someone comes in uninvited through force and imposes their language and way of life on you. Well, that's more or less what happened in the early years when the United States acquired Puerto Rico as a result of the Spanish-American War. Following the acquisition of Puerto Rico, the U.S. government's first priority was to quote-unquote civilize Puerto Ricans and to assimilate the Puerto Rican political and legal system to the American system. This began a process of Americanization which aimed to turn Puerto Ricans away from their culture and identity and more towards the American way of life against their will and their own country. In order to achieve this goal, public education was chosen, especially through changing the language used as the medium of instruction in the schools from Spanish to English. In 1900, the U.S. transitioned Puerto Rican students from Spanish as the language of instruction until the eighth grade to English instruction in secondary school. By 1902, English was the medium of instruction on the island at all levels of education. Even the official spelling of the name Puerto Rico was officially anglicized into Puerto Rico. You will see this in documents, maps, and even the currency from the early 1900s. During this era, U.S. teachers were hired to teach English and Puerto Rican teachers were sent to the U.S. to learn English. Also, teachers, institutes, and summer schools were created to prepare teachers for the transition. Soon after, it was mandatory for all teachers on the island to use English as the language of instruction. Those that refused were simply told to resign or face the consequences. Most that adhered to the English-only policy were against it, but they feared losing their jobs. Resistance to this policy was so rampant on the island that U.S. authorities attempted several different language policies in the following years, each one a little less obtrusive than the previous, but with the same goal. However, none of them came even close to accomplishing their goals of creating an American society on the island. In 1912, Puerto Ricans established the Asociación de Maestros de Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican Teachers Association, as a form of resistance against the forceful use of language for the promotion of U.S. ideologies. The association's central objective was to reestablish Spanish as the instructional language. In the following decades, there was even more stiff resistance from the people on the island in all walks of life who viewed these policies as an attack on Puerto Rican identity. It also turned out to be incredibly difficult to teach English to a mostly rural population who had heard nothing like it before in their lives and had parents that did not understand it either. Eventually, American authorities would back down and this eventually led Puerto Rican officials to recognize Spanish as the primary language of instruction with English taught as a subject across all levels. This change also evolved as a result of Congress allowing Puerto Ricans to elect their own governor after 1947 
with Luis Munoz Marin as the first elected governor of Puerto Rico. He was from the Popular Democratic Party, which advocated for protecting Puerto Rican culture. Today, both Spanish and English are the official languages of Puerto Rico, but Spanish is without a doubt the dominant language. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.